the US manufacturing industry is at a 10 year low. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Still working through my Stein of coffee when I thought, since we've got the Australian dollar at a 10 year low, let's have a look at this article about the US factory production and industry also at a 10 year low. Now, before we jump and have a look at this article, let's have a look over here. We'll go to trading economics and just have a look at the United States purchasing managers index, the PMI, just to see how it's changed. Now, I think discussing these things and having a contrarian interpretation or perspective on a lot of what we presented in the media is important. We need to look at you know, this data and combine everything together to get a better understanding. And I'd like to encourage you to share this with your friends, your family on social media so more people are talking about this. So we don't just blindly follow what's told to us from the news or from our politicians or from our leaders. People need to take a step back sometimes and realize, you know, what you're being told may only be half the story. Or what seems like a really good idea that your favorite politician is saying may actually have some unintended consequences. So here we have the United States ISM Purchasing Managers Index, PMI. Now how this works is, with the PMI, it's from a scale from zero to 100. And they ask purchasing managers just questions. And usually it's, you know, how is your work compared to, uh, from now to last quarter? How does it compare from now to all future predictions? Quite simple. And then they quantify the data and if you have, if the number is below 50, that means it's generally a negative. You know, generally the consensus among most of the purchasing managers they talk to was negative. If it's above 50, it's positive. So it's a good way just to give a gauge of where things are heading. And it depends on the methodology they use or, or which sector, you know, you can get into quite, quite greater detail than I'm explaining here, but that's enough for you to understand what the number means. We can see here, I mean, there you go, in October 2018, it was well over 56, and it goes down to now we're under 48. So the US dropped to 47.8 in September, down from 49.1. See, and that's important too, it's the, the delta change from one month to the next, because that'll just, I'd say it would have an accumulative effect. Psychologically, it'll have an effect. If you go from one month where stuff's okay to another month where it's getting worse, then it can just snowball because that's when you have to start taking drastic actions. I know those, you know, architectural firms here in the city, when times got tough, they'd fire 50 people on one day. We, we had to do it too. When we had a big job fell through. Rachel and I had to fire what, half our workforce in one day, a couple of years ago, just when the mining boom kind of died. It's not a fun thing to do. Although since smart people can tell it's coming, you worry about the ones that couldn't, to be honest. So, here we go. We can see it's it's trending down. Let's let's pull out to five years and, and look at that decline. When was that? There we go. Just running up to 2016. We'll go 10 years. Well, there you go. Look how much it shot up from 2008. So look how far below it was under 40. What's the max data? And you can see there how cyclical it is. There's 2008, guys. There you go. So let's have a look at the United States economy. And this is from the Observatory of Economic Complexity. Now they're the seventh most complex economy in the world. And at the time of this data, 1.25 trillion in exports, 2.16 trillion in imports. And it's the third largest economy. And have a look at what they're exporting. So with the factory activity down, all of this is going to decrease and it will have a flow on effect to the economy. So people are saying the US economy is booming, it's booming, it's booming. That kind of flies in the face of what we're being presented with here. If the PMI is down, because what's going to happen? People are going to get laid off. And then that will also decrease the demand for their imports. And let's see, who's their biggest destination? China, Mexico. Mexico is number one. Then China looks like it's number two. Canada. Sorry, Mexico, Canada, and then China. And then Japan and Germany. And the origins. First is China then Mexico and Canada. I wonder, I, I, assuming that this has changed, I would put money that Canada is a bigger portion now, particularly since all the uh, oil that they're producing. So it will have a flow on effect, guys. 
the US will have a flow on effect. Let's see where we where we rank. Um, Australia is 1.6% from destination and origins. They are, what is it? Let's just click here. We will just isolate, sorry, we'll isolate Oceania. And Australia is 8.57 billion of our goods exported over to the States. New Zealand, 3.61. I bet you most of that cheese. Cheese or milk. So that can show you how this can have a slowdown in America will have an impact on Australia and will have an impact on the region and the world. So let's jump, jump to this article and have a look. We will have a look. Donald Trump slams pathetic Federal Reserve and Wall Street tumbles as US factory activity hits a 10 year low. US President Donald Trump has used his favorite social media platform, Twitter, to take another swipe at the Federal Reserve and its chairman, Jerome Powell. Now, here's the thing, regardless of what you think of Trump, he really has given Twitter relevance. I mean, he has driven so many people there. Now he can't even block people because it's, it's impeding freedom of speech for reporters. So yeah, no, nah, he's given it relevance. I thought it was just for social justice warriors to, to hate mob people and all that rubbish. Well, let me know in the comments, guys, if you use Twitter. I, I have a Twitter and I kind of just share the videos and contents I produce. I don't really use it at all or rarely engage with people on it. I just never found it that interesting. Let me know what you think about it. The fact that we're in a, a Twitter based economy. I'm just waiting maybe once the wait till the CBA starts to incorporate Twitter tweets into their economic projections. We'll see that. As I predicted, Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve have allowed the US dollar to get so strong, especially relative to all other currencies that our manufacturers are being negatively affected. Mr. Trump tweeted on Tuesday, local time. Well, okay, it also means that other countries are getting worse relative to your country. You can't have it both ways, Trumpy. You can't have it both ways. Australian dollar is at a decade low, a decade low. So the Fed rate's too high. They're their own worst enemy. You don't have a clue, pathetic. Mr. Trump has made several online posts in the past few months insulting the independent Fed and its chief, who he personally appointed. The president even impunged Mr. Powell's loyalty for not cutting US interest rates aggressively enough, questioning who the great enemy was, the Fed chairman or China's President Xi Jinping? There's a question for you. I, I honestly would think, what's worse? The socialist dictator or the reserve bank system around the world? What's worse? What's a greater risk to humanity on the long term? Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. It'd be interesting to hear your opinions. So what sparked Mr. Trump's latest outbreak was new data revealing US manufacturing activity had contra contracted sharply, recording its worst result in more than 10 years. They also stoked investors' fears of a worsening global economic slowdown exacerbated by Mr. Trump's ongoing trade war with China, triggering a Wall Street sell-off overnight. Well, there you are. The Institute for Supply Management's latest figures shows U.S. factory activity fell to 47.8 in September, its weakest result since June 2009. A reading below 50 indicates contraction in the manufacturing sector and is not a good sign for the economy. September's reading marked the second straight month that the index fell below the 50 threshold. The index has now declined for six consecutive months. What does that tell you guys? What does that tell you about the confidence in that industry? With lingering trade tensions weighing on exports, the US data mirrored similar patterns in the Eurozone Japan, the United Kingdom, and China. This is serious. Torsten Slock, chief economist for Deutsche Bank Securities in New York said, oh wow, Deutsche Bank still have people working in the securities section? Wall Street's main indices, the Dow Jones, S&P 500, and NASDAQ dropped by around 1.2% each. The industry skewed Dow lost 344 points to close at 26,573. It's all due to the trade war. European markets dropped overnight with German's DAX shedding 1.3% and London's FTSE down 0.7. It was also the result of weak manufacturing data weighing on investor sentiment. 
the final reading of the Purchasing Managers Index manufacturing data for the Eurozone in September came in at 45.7, also in contraction territory. There you go. Europe is doing bad. US is doing bad. Australia has cut interest rates to the lowest level ever. Our dollar is dropping. And remember, guys, remember our economy. We're not a manufacturing economy. Okay, you look, you look at the states here, the sophistication, you know, they're at seventh level complexity. Let's have a look at Australia. And we'll just remember, remind ourselves. Oh, I'm clicking on China. Oh, well, China's at 33rd, the level of complexity there. Compare that to Australia. We are a farm and a quarry, guys. That's what we are. We're a farm and a quarry. 59th in the world. Okay, so the demand for these goods, the demands for what we're producing, which mostly is going to China, is going to be affected by these PMIs. So if all of these industries, manufacturing industries, are in negative territory or contracting, how do you think that's going to flow through to our economy here in Australia? It's going to affect us. It's going to affect us. So, this is also the weakest result in seven years. The PMIs across the globe have continued to deteriorate, and obviously we're in line with the deterioration. It's all due to the trade war, Peter Cardillo, chief market economist at Spartan Capital Securities said. Spartan Capital Securities, I like that name, it's a good name. A slowdown in US economic growth at the time when Europe is seen as close to falling into a recession would remove one of the bright spots among global markets. Here's the thing. I, I, oh, I was hoping, I'd love to get an architectural PMI, essentially, for the people in the architectural profession to see what's on the drawing board, what's coming up. And I was, I was always annoyed that the Australian Institute of Architects never really seemed to do any economic research or provide any data like that. Whenever I'd go to the conferences, it'd just be the same old stuff. And I remember I went to um, to an alumni event and there were architects there talking. They're just bitching about the same things again. Oh, students aren't prepared for the industry. And I thought it was funny because they're saying the same things they said a decade ago back when I was a student. <laughs> it's never changed. But yet, as a profession, we never get any access to this data, at least not here in Australia. They're more interested in having you know, gender parity on their, their boards and their, their quotas. But maybe that's why as an organization, they're losing membership and they're having to sell their assets. But anyway, that, that's, that's a jab. I'm not a member anymore. Calm down, Florian. You'll get it sorted one day. We'll get there. Okay. In addition, the World Trade Organization on Tuesday cut its forecast for growth in global trade this year by more than half. Well, there you go. Why isn't that the headline? How could I look at that? The WTO has said further rounds of tariffs and retaliation, a slowing economy and a disorderly Brexit could squeeze it even more. It's now it now expects global merchandise trade to increase by 1.2% this year, compared with his much rosier April estimate of 2.6%. For 2020, the WTO is predicting growth of 2.7%, down from its previous estimate of 3%. The darkening outlook for trade is discouraging, but not unexpected. WTO Director General Roberto Azevedo said in a statement urging WTO members to resolve trade disagreements and cooperate to reform the Geneva-based body. And here we're talking about the Australian dollar sinking to a low, which I already discussed this morning. Here's interesting. Demand for safe havens also boosts the Japanese currency by 1% with the Australian dollar falling to 72.2 yen. And that's interesting that Japan is seen as a safe haven currency. It's, it's kind of all works you know, systematically. One thing goes to another and people retreat into those. And I'll let's just have a look. We'll jump here while we're looking. Uh, Japanese yen 107 US. US dollars. Where's that from a historical perspective? So yeah, it's... it's We've gone up since September. Definitely, we'll go max data. What do we have? So it's still a lot lower. We'll see if it jumps up. Let's have a look at my favorite silver. Oh, there we go. It's had a little spike, hasn't it? Hasn't it? There you go from this morning. Silver's gone up again. And gold, we're going to hit over 
15,000 US again. How's that going? Oh, look at that. So there you go. People are moving into safe haven assets. So we'll have to keep watching everything, guys. Keep your finger on the pulse. What are you doing to prepare for this? Well, I think I know most viewers are, are preparing. I mean, tough times are coming. And this will affect Australia. Don't think it will. Don't think, don't think we're immune to that. Don't, honestly, regardless of whoever's in power, people are going, oh, the liberals are stuffing it up always, or the labor stuffing it up always. They're two sides of the same coin, guys. You know, we're a tiny country with a population of, what, 25 mil? And we're producing iron ore and farms. And the solution to our economic woes is simply to pump housing up more. Okay? Come on. It's not innovative. What's the difference? Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me for this episode. And if you'd like to help me create more videos like this, I have a Patreon and a subscribe star, and I appreciate all your help on that. Thank you all to everyone who watches my content and shares it out. And please like, share, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Take care, everyone.